Our next lesson will be from lesson 6.3, which is on comparing functions. And for the first part of 6.3, we're going to be learning to compare a table and an equation. And our goal with this lesson is to compare and contrast properties of two related functions that are represented as a table or equation. Now in doing so, essentially what we're going to have is we're going to have two functions. One of those functions will be as a table. The other function will be as an equation. Now within the table and the equation, we'll need to identify both the slope and the y-intercept of each. Then we're going to compare the slopes and we're going to compare the y-intercepts and determine which function has the greater slope and which function has the greater y-intercept and see how that impacts the functions. So let me go ahead and write that down as a note for us that we can be sure of what it is exactly that we're striving for in this lesson. So the note I have for us is that for each function we need to identify the slope and y-intercept, then determine how that impacts the relationship between the functions. So again, we're identifying the slope and the y-intercept, and we'll be using that information to answer a final question that the problem might pose to us. Let's take a look at a couple examples to see what we mean here. Our first example, we have Josh and Maggie buy MP3s from different download services. The cost for Josh's monthly subscription is represented by the equation y equals 0.50x plus 10, while Maggie's cost is represented by the table below. So what we want to do for both of these functions, for the equation, for the equation representing Josh and the table representing Maggie, we want to identify both the slope and the y-intercept for both those. And then we want to compare them. Now, after we get done with all that, I'm going to ask one more additional question that will kind of wrap up the problem. So let's start with Josh's equation first. Out of the four ways of representing a function, and those are equation, table, graph, and verbal description or, ver or word problem, out of all four of those, the easiest way to identify the slope and y-intercept should be from an equation. We know that an equation is y equals mx plus b, so here we have y, that means this 0.50 must be m, x plus b must be 10. So for Josh, the slope must be 0.5, and the y-intercept, or the value for b, must be positive 10. And so that's all we have to do for that equation. We don't have to do any more work there. We will have to eventually compare the two functions, but that's all we have to do for the equation. Again, the equation should be the easiest. But now we move on to the table, the table that represents Maggie's cost. And so we have to first identify the slope from the table. So for the songs, for the delta x value, we see that we're going up by 5. And now for the cost, we should see there that we're going up by four fifty, four dollars and fifty cents. So now we're going to use m is equal to delta y over delta x, which is going to be m is equal to four point five or four fifty divided by five. And so when we simplify this, we get m is going to be equal to four point five divided by five is going to give us 0 0.9 or 0 0.90. So now, just in talking about rate of change, we have Maggie's rate of change is 0 0.90 and Josh's rate of change is 0 0.50. So what that means is that for every song Maggie downloads, she's playing, paying 90 cents. For every song that Josh downloads, he's paying 50 cents. But he has to pay a $10 membership fee. That's what that B equals 10 represents. Every month, he has to pay a $10 membership fee in order to maintain his download subscription. Maggie, on the other hand, we don't know what her monthly subscription fee is yet. Let's take a look at figuring out what her initial value or what the y-intercept or B is for Maggie. Now, we've done this before, but I know it's still a confusing process, so let's walk through it again. Maggie's rate of change is 0 0.90. We're going to use that. We're also going to use one of these four ordered pairs. I want to use smaller numbers if I can, so I'm going to use 5, 450. I'm going to scroll to a new page in order to show the work for this. So we have slope is equal to 0 0.90, 
the ordered pair is 5 comma 450. So that means our x value is going to be 5 and our y value is going to be 450. So I'm going to substitute all of those into y equals mx plus b. And so when I do that, I have 4.50 is equal to 0 0.9 times 5 plus b. And so now I just go ahead and do some simplifying. Again, what I did, substituted 450 in for y, 0 0.9 in for m, 5 in for x, and then I just left the b as it is. So now I do some simplifying. On the left side, I'm going to multiply 0 0.9 times 450. I might have said on the left side. I meant on the right side. On the left side, I'm just going to bring down the 450 is equal to, and then on the right, 0 0.9 times 450 is going to give us 450. Then we bring down the plus b. So now on both sides, we'll subtract 450. That means these cancel and these cancel. Now when numbers cancel, they go to 0. So we have 0 equals, on the right we would have 0 plus b, but anything plus 0 is going to give the anything that you started with. So on the right side we have b. So our initial value or our value for b is going to be 0. That means that we wouldn't write anything at all. So this is going to be a proportional relationship because it would pass right through the origin if we were to graph it. So scroll back up to write down our initial value and continue the problem from there. All right, so we have Maggie's initial value or y-intercept is going to be zero. Her song subscription is going to be 90 cents per song, but she does not have to pay any sort of monthly fee. That's what this b equals zero means. She does not have to pay a mon monthly membership fee. She just pays 90 cents per song that she downloads. Josh, on the other hand, pays ten dollars per month plus fifty songs per download so the question then becomes which one's a better deal well the answer to that depends really on how many songs that you download if you don't download any songs Maggie is gonna pay zero because she doesn't download any songs but Josh is still gonna pay ten dollars a month so even though Josh doesn't download any new songs he still pays ten dollars a month while Maggie would pay zero so if you're, gonna, if you're not going to download any new songs, Maggie's subscription is the better deal. But if you're going to download a whole bunch of songs, obviously in time, this 50 cents per song is going to overcome this $10 monthly fee, and Maggie's going to end up paying more. So let's say that we want to find out who has the better deal for, let's say, 30 songs a month. Okay, 30 songs a month. So this is our final question. This is where we're doing our comparison of the, of the two functions to see which one is a better value for 30 songs a month. All right, so for Maggie, again, pays 90 cents per song, but she does not have a monthly subscription fee. So for Maggie, to find out how much she would pay for 30 songs, we would just multiply 30 times 0.90. Okay, so 30 times 0.90. I hope this is one that you can do in your heads. If not, that's okay but 30 times 0.90 is going to give us a total of $27. So Maggie would pay $27 if she down downloaded 30 songs at 90 cents a piece. Now for Josh, he's going to only pay 50 cents per song, but then we have to add on top of that the $10 monthly subscription fee. So for Josh, we're going to take 30 times 0 0.50 which is going to equal $15. Okay, so it's $15 for Josh to download the songs, but then we have to add the $10 monthly subscription fee, so his total comes out to be a total of $25. So in this case, for 30 songs, if you're going to download 30 songs a month, Josh's subscription is a better value. He only has to pay $25, while Maggie would pay $27. Again, if it were fewer songs, maybe up to 20 songs, I'm not sure what the exact number is. If it was only 20 or maybe less, then Maggie would probably have the better subscription plan. But as it stands, for 30 songs a month, Josh's subscription plan is better. 
Let's take a look at one more example. For our second example, we have Quentin is choosing between buying books at the bookstore or buying them online. The cost for buying books online is represented by the equation y equals 7x plus 2. The cost of buying at the bookstore can be represented by the table below. So, we have these two equations again, and we're comparing online or in person at the bookstore. And again, the bookstore is represented by the table. The buying them online is represented by the equation. I would always encourage you to start with the equation because that gives you some sense of accomplishment. It should be the easier one to identify. Again, it's y equals mx plus b. So for buying the books online, our value for m is going to be 7, and our value for b is going to be 2. All right. Now, for buying them at the bookstore, we need to find the value for the rate of change and then the initial value or the value for b. So let's take a look at finding from the finding the slope from the table. We see that for the x values we're going up by 1. And the cost going up by y, we're going up by 750. So to figure out the slope, we're going to do m is equal to delta y over delta x, so that's 750 over 1. Therefore, the slope is going to be $7.50. So what this means is that for each book that you buy at the bookstore, it's going to cost you $7.50. But if you buy them online, each book costs only $7, but you have to pay a $2 fee, and I'm not sure, they don't specify exactly what that $2 fee is, it could be like a shipping and handling fee or something like that. So no matter how many books that you buy, you still have to pay that $2 fee. Maybe it's a maybe it's a membership fee like the last problem. So you're paying that $2 fee every time you order books online. But we still have to figure out the initial value or the y-intercept or the value for b for the bookstore. Again, I'll scroll to a different page to show the work for that. Now before I do, I want to show my key information, my slope. My slope is going to be 750, and I'm going to use one of these ordered pairs. I'm going to use the top one because it has the smallest numbers. So I'm going to use 750 for my slope. I'm going to use 1 for x, and I'm going to use 750 for y. So here we have our key information. We have our slope is 750. Our ordered pair is 1, 750. We're going to substitute that information into the equation, giving us... 750 is equal to 750 times 1 plus b. So I'm going to bring down what I have on the left side, multiply what I have on the right side, and bring down the plus b. So now I have 750 is equal to 750 plus b. Now I subtract 750 from both sides. That's going to cause these on the right side to cancel, but it's also going to cancel the 750s on the left side too giving me 0 is equal to b. Now I know that my initial value for the second equation, or the second for the table, is going to be b is equal to 0. So for the bookstore, the initial value is going to be 0. So you don't have to pay any type of membership fee or shipping costs or anything like that if you're going to buy books from the bookstore. So again, bookstore, $7.50 a book, but you don't have to pay any sort of membership or subscription fee. If you buy the books online, you're only paying $7, but you do have to pay that $2 subscription fee. So the question before us again, which one's a, which one's a better value? Well, it all comes down to how many books you're going to be buying. If you're going to be buying a lot of books, it's probably better to buy them online because each book is going to be cheaper, but you still have to pay that $2 shipping cost. But if you're only going to buy maybe not that many books, you're probably going to have a better value at the bookstore. So let's talk about buying five books. Which one is going to be a better value, buying from the bookstore or buying those books online? Well, for the bookstore, in order to figure out the total cost for five books, we would take 750, multiply it by five. So 750 multiplied times five, multiplied by five, is going to give us $37.50 as the cost for five books. 
All right, so $37.50 for five books from the bookstore. Now what about if we buy them online? We're going to take 7 times 5, which we know should equal $35, but then we have to add the $2 for shipping or membership or whatever it might be, and that gives us a total of $37. So if you are going to buy five books, you're probably better off buying them online. It will save you 50 cents. You know, that's that depends. If you want the books today or if you're willing to wait a few days for them to be shipped to you. So, bookstore, $37.50, but you get them right away. Buy them online, you only pay $37, but you have, might have to wait for them. So, mathematically, the online, buying them online is a better value, but it's a question of whether or not you want them right away or if you're willing to wait for them. That wraps up our look at 6.3a, comparing a table and an equation. And again, our goal with this, and I hope you can do this now, is to compare and contrast properties of two related functions that are represented as a table or equation. Write down any questions that you have, and we'll go over those in class together.